G'day guys, my name's Dave and welcome to another Guitar Zero to Hero song tutorial. In this lesson, I'm going to teach you how to play Fly Me to the Moon by Frank Sinatra, which is an absolute classic. So I'll be teaching you two different ways of playing this song. The first method is the really simple strummed version for the beginners out there. And the second method is more of a rhythmic finger picked version for more of the intermediate to advanced players out there. I'll also be teaching you a cool lead part in the instrumental bridge. Now for the basics of this song, you'll just need your guitar and standard tuning and you won't need a capo. If you wanna master your chords back to front, then be sure to head over to guitarzerodyhero.com to pick up my free guitar ebook. Or if you wanna improve on your guitar, then check out Guitar Zero to Hero Premium, which is my complete step-by-step -step guitar course. Let's jump into the lesson. Okay, so let's start with the easy strummed version. And this is actually quite simple. It might seem complicated when you look at the chords on chord websites, but it's actually pretty simple when it's broken down, at least in my method anyway. Now, before we get into the chords, I'm just gonna teach you the strumming pattern, which is really simple. It's just a down, 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 up, down, up. And it's got a bit of a swing feel, this song. So what that means is that the down strums are held out slightly longer than the up strums. So if I was to play it straight, it would sound like this, down, up, down, up. But with swing, that down strum's held out a little longer. Like that. And the strumming pattern again. Down, 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 up, down, up. Now we're going to apply that for every chord in this song, which is really nice and simple. So let's start with verse number one. And verse number one has four lines of chords here. So we're gonna start with an A minor. And then we have a D minor seven. So to play that, just bar your index finger across the first frets of the first and second string and middle finger goes on the second fret of the third string. And we're gonna strum from the fourth string onwards. Now it's ideal to actually mute the fifth and sixth string if you can with your thumb reaching over the top. But if you can't reach over to mute those two strings then at least just mute the sixth string and that will vastly improve the sound of this chord because a lot of beginners will strum all the chords and if you happen to hit that open sixth string it's gonna sound terrible. So that's D minor seven, and then we have G and C. The second line of chords is F. So I prefer to play an F like this as opposed to the bar chord. You can play the bar chord as well if you want, but I like doing it like this. So ring and pinky on the third frets, middle finger on the second fret of the third string, and index finger on the first fret of the second string. And if you can, reach over your thumb and hit the first fret of the sixth string. So that's our F, and then we have D minor, E, and then we have two chords here, A minor and A7. Now this is the only part in the song where the chord progression will change a little bit. So for these two chords, we have a short strumming pattern that goes down, down, up. So the A minor to the A7, down, 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 down. And then for the third line of chords, we have D minor seven, G, C, and A7. For the fourth line of chords, it's the same as the third line of chords, except we go to the E major instead of the A7. So that's it for verse one, which sounds like this all together. And that's it for verse one. And those same chords are actually used in the instrumental section as well. So verse two is pretty much identical to verse one with the exception of the very last chord. So instead of going to an E major in the first verse, we're just going to stay on the C for two strumming patterns. So that's the only difference between verse number two and verse number one. And finally, for verse number four, we have five lines of tab here instead of just four. So our first three lines of chords are identical to our other verses. So we've already learned that. Where we're going to differ though is the last two lines of chords. So for this fourth line of chords, we're gonna go D minor seven for two strumming patterns. And then we have B flat seven 
for two strumming patterns as well. So to play a B flat seven, you've got to bar your index finger across the first fret and then ring and pinky finger go on the third frets of the fourth and second string. So that's B flat seven. You can also play B flat seven up here as well, if you want. So that's played for two strumming patterns. And then we have a G minor seven. So to play that middle ring and pinky finger on the third frets of the fourth, third and second and index finger on the third fret of the sixth string. And you just wanna keep that fifth string muted. So that's G minor seven. And then we're gonna to go to a G seven. So just slide your ring finger up one fret. You can lift your pinky finger at this point. And we only wanna focus on those three strings. Again, keep that fifth string muted. So one strumming pattern on the G minor seven, one strumming pattern on the G seven, and then there's a riff to end the song. So the riff is quite simple. We're going to go up here to 10th and 12th frets. So 10th fret of the first string, 12th fret of the third string. Now you're gonna do some hybrid picking here. Now this part isn't necessary, it's just an add on. You can actually just end the song with the C chord, but I like adding this because it's in the actual recording. So we're going to hybrid pick. So you're gonna pluck the third string and at the same time use your middle finger to pluck the first string. And what we're going to do is pluck the two strings but then hammer on with your ring finger onto the 12th fret of the first string. And we're gonna do that three times. And then we're going to end the song on the C. So the final and fourth verse in total sounds like this. And that's everything for the easy strum version. Really, really simple. So now I'll teach you a finger picked rhythm method, which sounds a lot more stripped back. It's got a better groove. If you're a bit more of an intermediate to an advanced player, this is probably the method you'd probably look to play as it sounds a bit more refined than just the simple strumming version. Let's start with verse number one. Now the chords are essentially the same as the easy strummed version. However, we are playing mostly bar chords here. And by doing so, that will give us more control over how to mute the strings. So let's talk about finger picking. So our thumb's gonna take care of the sixth and fifth strings and our index, middle and ring finger will take care of the fourth, third and second strings. And they shouldn't pluck any other strings other than the ones that have been assigned to for pretty much the whole song. Now for basically every single chord, we're going to have this pattern, which goes a pinch on the one beat. So we're gonna play all the strings. And then on the two beat, we slap. Now, when you slap, you're gonna drop your hand onto the strings. Most of that sound comes from the side of your thumb hitting that sixth or fifth string. But when your hand comes back down, make sure your fingers are curled and slot back into their assigned positions. If you slap like this, then it's gonna be inefficient because you're gonna to have to curl your fingers back up anyway. So slap your fingers into place because then on the end beat after the two, we're then going to have to pinch again. And then on the end beat after the three, you'll pluck the fourth, third and second strings and then slap on the four. So for the A minor, this is what the typical picking pattern will sound like. Or one and two and three and four and. So that picking pattern is gonna be used throughout the whole song. So just get used to it. I'll just practice it on one chord, just get familiar with it. And of course there is a swing feel here. So it's one and two and three and four and the end beats are held quite short. So one and two and three and four and just practice it again and again.
Okay, so once we've gotten the picking pattern out of the way, the rest is really easy because we're just gonna be shifting bar chords all over the fretboard. Then we go down to a D minor seven like this. Now our bass note is the fifth string, but again, we're going to stay with the fourth, third and second strings with the rest of our fingers. So one pattern here. And then we go to a G7. And then we go to a C major seven. So that's the first line of tab. The second line of tab, we go to a F. Then we go back to a D minor. This is D minor, not D minor seven. And then we go up to an E major. So you can play it like this, or you can play it like this. I prefer playing it with my ring finger barring those three strings. And I use the open sixth string as my bass note. And then we go back to an A minor. Now it's gonna shift from an A minor to an A7 here. So the first pinch is an A minor and then the rest of it is an A7, so. Like that. So the second liner tab. For the third liner tab, we're going back to a D minor seven. G seven. C major seven. And then to an A seven. And for the fourth line of tab, it's almost identical to the third line of tab, except for that final bar, we're playing an E major chord like this instead of the A7. And that's it for verse number one, which sounds like this all together. And that's it for verse number one. Now, verse number two is basically identical, except for the final bar. Instead of going to our E major, we're staying on our C major seven for two bars. So nothing new to learn there for verse number two. The instrumental is the same as verse number one. And finally, for verse number four, there's five lines of tab here instead of just four. So the first three lines of tab are identical to the other verses. The fourth line of tab, we're going to go to a D minor seven and play this for two picking patterns. And then we go to a B flat seven like this for two picking patterns. And then we go to a G minor seven. So middle ring and pinky finger on the third frets and index finger on the third fret of the sixth string like this. From the B flat seven, you can just pivot around that pinky finger, playing this for one picking pattern. And then we go to a G seven. So just pivot around your index finger. And then we're gonna play the outro riff. So to play that, index on 10th fret, middle on the 12th fret of the third string. Now we're going to pinch the third and first strings together. And at the same time, you're gonna hammer on your ring finger like that. We're gonna do that three times. And then we just end on a C chord. And that's it for verse four, which sounds like this in total.
Finally, I'm gonna teach you a lead guitar part that you can play on top of the instrumental section. And this is really fun. It's quite simple as well. So even beginners should be able to play this. So this four lines a tab, and we're going to start up at the eighth fret. So we're gonna slide up to the eighth fret and pluck it twice. And then down to the seventh, twice. And then down to fifth, and then eighth fret of the second string. And then there's a bit of a gap, and then we go to the sixth fret and hold that. So the first phrase. Then for the next phrase, we're going to slide up to the seventh with our ring finger, then down to fifth twice. And then we go to eighth fret of the second string, back up to the fifth fret of the first, and then sixth fret of the second string, and then end on the fifth fret. So that second phrase. For the second line of tab, we slide up to the 10th fret of the second string with our ring, and we're gonna pluck that twice. And then down to eighth twice, then sixth, and then fifth. So that run. Then we go seventh fret, and there's staccato here, so you don't have to keep those notes ringing. So you can just play it and mute it, and then go to fifth of the second string, and then sixth, and then fifth fret of the first string, and then we go down to fourth fret of the first string, and then hold that out. And so far. Then for the final phrase, we go sixth fret of the second string, fifth fret, seventh fret of the fifth string, and then end on the fifth fret of the third string. For the next phrase, we start on the sixth fret of the third string. We're gonna pluck that, and then quickly go to the seventh fret of the third string, then fifth fret of the first string, mute it, and then hit it again. So that run. Then the next phrase, we slide up to the eighth fret of the first string, down to seventh, and then eighth fret of the second string. So. Then for the next run, we go fourth fret of the third string, fifth fret, then a bit of a mute, and then sixth fret of the second string twice. So that run. Then for the next phrase, fifth fret of the third string, then seventh fret, pluck that, and then pull off to the fifth. So that run. And then to end this, we're gonna slide up to the 12th fret of the first string. And this is on the end beat after the ones, so it's one and. And that ends the solo. So in total, this is what it sounds like. And that's everything you need to learn for this song. So now I'll be doing two playthroughs of the song. I'll be doing the easy strum playthrough and then I'll be doing the rhythmic finger picked playthrough. And I'll have a vocal track on top for some context. Feel free to play these back as many times as you'd like to, practice, play along to, and see how you go. Fly.
Fly me to the moon and let me play among the stars. Let me see what spring is like on Jupiter and Mars. In other words, hold my hand. In other words, baby, kiss me. Song and let me sing forevermore. You are all I long for, all I worship and adore. In other words, please be true. In other words, And let me sing forevermore. You are all I long for, all I worship and adore. In other words, please be true. In other words, in other words. Thanks so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this lesson, then I know you'll absolutely love these other lessons too. So hit the link here, or if you wanna grab a copy of my free guitar ebook, then head over to guitarzerotohero.com or click the link here. Thanks so much, and I'll see you guys next time on Guitar Zero to Hero. Cheers.